Hi, my name is Jack Boston Kemper, Director of Agronomy and Research here at Liquor Grow. Hi, I'm Katie Hess, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Liquor Grow. And we drive by a lot of fields and we're seeing a lot of yellowing in this last month. And I kept calling Jake and I said, Jake, what's this yellowing? What's this yellowing? So after other people called him as well. Then I started getting concerned. And he finally right. went out and looked in the field. And, you know, these soybeans, um, a lot of the diseases have the same symptomology. So I really have to hand it to you for thinking, let's send these off to the lab. And of course, you sent them to Iowa State Lab, right? Yep. So what did the lab say, Jake? So the lab came back as Phytophthora, which to your point, Katie, Root diseases are problematic in soybean in general. Uh, soybean are a lot more susceptible to root diseases than anybody thinks. But the other problem is, is that they all reasonably look similar, particularly if you're trying to decide whether it's Fusarium root rot or Phytophthora root rot. They, they, they all kind of look reasonably the same. So if you're not 100% confident, you always need to make sure you send samples off to the lab. Because whether it's fusarium root rot or phytophthora root rot has big implications on how you manage it. Sure. So let's tell the folks a little bit about that management. The farmers are going to ask us, is this going to cause a lot of yield damage into the fall? So that's a difficult question to answer, Katie, but I'll do my best. So, you know, in these yellow areas that you're seeing in soybean fields, assuming it's phytophthora, which you should get out and always go look. Mm hmm but get out and go take a look. If these yellow areas in your soybean fields are in fact phytophthora, you're gonna be looking for brownish to uh, chocolatey, reddish to chocolatey brown lesions toward the base of the stem. And then generally roots that are not healthy uh, also have lesions on them and are very brittle and snappy easily. That's the best way I can describe it. So if you find those symptoms, the question is, you know, how much yield am I gonna lose? So if we continue to get nice rains every so often, it might be 10 to 20% in the yellow areas. But if we dry out and don't have a very good end of the growing season, it could be as much as 50% in those areas or more. Because that other soybean plant that you have, you know, relative to this, it yeah, looks right. fairly healthy, yeah, but right. you start looking at that root. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's Katie. quite a so bit of damage obviously there. Obviously this plant, you know, Phytophthora has nearly killed this plant, obviously. But well, this plant was kind of on the outside of this really bad area, and it looks reasonably normal. I mean, it looks nice and green and healthy, but when you start digging up the, the plant, you're going to find on the lower stem here, there's some red to brown lesions, and the roots are just not healthy. You and said man, they're very brittle. They're very brittle. They're very dry. You know, they don't have a lot of root hairs on them. They're just not operating very effectively. So as long as we have some nice, timely rains here, the roots can work through that and yep. overcome some of this. Yep. That's right. Okay, so thinking about next year, or even the year after you get into this corn bean rotation, are we going to see more Phytophthora in the future? Could we see more? Yes, we could see more. And so let me back up a second and say that, you know, I called Allison Robertson. She's the plant pathologist at Iowa State, a plant pathologist at Iowa State. Uh, one of her focus areas is Phytophthora and soybeans, so that's why I call her. And she, you know, I was a little bit confused by this, Katie, because we haven't had the weather for Phytophthora. Phytophthora is a water mole that literally has to swim in water to infect nearby plants. And that makes sense. We're in this lower area where water might, might travel. It could swim through here if you have big rains, right? Yes. And the reason it was confusing, though, is because typically, typically Phytophthora is a seedling disease. Typically you get it early. And this didn't really start showing up until... Right before 4th of July. Right, right around exactly. that 4th of July yeah. time frame. Yep. So... Um, what did Allison say? So, you know, Allison told me that you know, this is a pretty widespread epidemic across Iowa, southern Wisconsin, Nebraska, northern Missouri. And she was just as shocked as I was that we have so much Phytophthora out there because it's been so dry. And so, but we do, right? So I'm, we're, we're, you know, we're thinking that those large rain events that many of us got in late June created enough, you know, enough moist soil that, that allowed this, this Phytophthora to move around the soil and infect plants. Typically, you see it early. But in this case, these plants got infected, you know, probably after emergence. So you can get Phytophthora throughout the year. There's different Correct. strains, There's strains different of strains Phytophthora. Phytophthora. Yeah. So as we're planning for 2024, what should folks be looking for? First thing you need to do is get out in your fields and look at these yellow spots. Do you have Phytophthora? The second thing you need to be thinking about is do not plant that same variety again because, you know, whatever, you know, the, 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 the natural resistance obviously was not good enough. The genes, the Phytophthora genes that were in those plants, obviously were not the right genes or weren't doing a good enough job protecting those plants. 
So don't plant the same variety. Look very closely at your seed catalog and talk with your seed dealer about um, varietal resistance. There's going to be something there called field tolerance, okay? And that is natural varietal resistance. So be looking for that field tolerance rating. And then finally, be looking at the Phytophthora genes, they call them, okay? And so those Phytophthora genes, they're not transgenic events, but they're genes that we have taken from soybeans and put in back crossed into, you know, modern germplasm, okay? And so there's different genes out there. There's three or four genes you'll commonly see in the seed catalogs. You know, don't if, if the variety you had had a gene and you've got Phytophthora, that means you need to think about switching up to a different gene. So to wrap that all up, you know, we spend a lot of time picking out our hybrids for corn yep. and we're very meticulous about that. Maybe we need to be a little more meticulous yes, going forward correct. with our beans so as seed, well. Seed treatment, uh, phytophthora field tolerance, and then be focusing in on the on the genes. And so I'll continue to talk with Allison at Iowa State. You know, she thinks it's possible there might have been a race shift, meaning that a lot of those genes would be ineffective. So if, if she can figure out what race we have now, that can help give our customers some guidance on what genes we need to be trying, what, what soybean plants and what genes we need to be planting to avoid this. So if folks want to learn more about, you know, ha having samples sent in, do we, what do we do? Yeah, well, if you want to have samples sent off to Iowa State, I would call your local Look or Go sales representative. Have them come out and look. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about this disease on our Monday morning conference call. We talked about it. We're going to talk about it again on Monday. They ought to be pretty up to speed on, you know, what Phytophthora looks like at that point. Have them come take a look. If it is Phytophthora, if they're questioning it, they can send me some pictures too. And finally, I think we ought to send some samples off to Iowa State, and they, they'll know how to do that and can take care of it. Okay, Jake, we've seen a lot of fly, planes flying around. We've seen a lot of ground rigs in the, in the field. Last question, does fungicide do anything for this? No. Fungicide will do nothing for Phytophthora rubra. Okay. Well, hope the folks uh, have a great day at home, and thanks for joining us in the field today, Jake. Stay in the know with Liquid Grow.